Hello, grade sevens. Helen here with you today for another natural sciences lesson. So we've been learning about the different physical properties of materials and today we're going to bring together what we know about boiling point and melting point. So remember that we said that when we speak about heat, we're speaking about an energy transfer. So if we had this pot of water and if we add heat to it, we're going to get to a certain point or a certain temperature at which the liquid starts to boil and changes from our liquid state into a gas state. So we need to understand these concepts that heat is energy that we can add to a substance or we can take away from a substance. And boiling point refers to a particular measure of an amount of heat that has been added to a substance in order to bring it to the boil. And what we mean by boiling is that the liquid changes into a gas. And we know that that phase change or state change is called evaporation. Now we've also learned about almost the opposite of boiling point. We've looked at melting point, which is now when a solid doesn't boil immediately, but first it has to melt. And the melting point, we've seen ice melt, we can look at cheese melting and ice cream melting and if you remember in our last lesson we looked at chocolate melting there is going to be a certain temperature at which the substance starts to turn from a solid into a liquid and that is called our melting point so to summarize the melting point of a substance is the temperature beyond which the material changes from a solid to a liquid and we call that melting. And you also learned in our last lesson that for water in particular, the melting point is 0 degrees C and so is the freezing point at which liquid water becomes a solid. So let's look now at some other substances and look at their boiling points. And melting points because remember when we talk about a hundred degrees C we're talking about the temperature at which water boils and when we talk about zero degrees C we're talking about the temperature at which water melts or ice melts into liquid water and these two particular temperatures, 0 and 100 degrees C, they are the temperatures relating to the material known as water. But do all materials boil at 100 degrees C and do all materials melt at 0 degrees C? Well, we know that this isn't the case. Other substances have different melting and boiling points. And today we're going to do a little bit of data analysis or information breakdown. And we're going to compare what we know about water's boiling point and melting point. And we're going to compare it to two other substances. Now, nitrogen is an element that is very common in the air that you're breathing. The air around us is made up of 78% nitrogen. So that's a lot of nitrogen. So with every breath of air that you inhale, you're inhaling a lot of nitrogen, but your body can't absorb that nitrogen. So you simply exhale 78% of it or exactly the same amount of nitrogen that went in comes out when you exhale. So we're going to examine the boiling point and the melting point for nitrogen. And we're going to look at another substance called ethanol. Now, ethanol is 
an alcohol, a very common alcohol that you find in, for example, your hand sanitizers and in substances that make up alcoholic drinks. So we're going to look at these three materials and we're going to compare their melting points and their boiling points. And we're going to do it on an interesting graph that shows us temperature down the y-axis. And I've simply put it on this side of the y-axis as well as there to help us plot straight lines. And we're going to look at the boiling point of water and I've left it out because by now you should know it off a heart. So can you all shout it out for me there at home? Of course your boiling point of water is a hundred and we must write the units degrees Celsius. The melting point of water, shout it out for me, I want to be able to hear you say it. What is the melting point of water? It is naught and our units are degrees Celsius. Now you don't have to know it, but the boiling point of nitrogen is minus 200 degrees C and its melting point is just 10 degrees lower. Ethanol's boiling point is 78 degrees C and its melting point is minus 114 degrees C. What is our room temperature? Well, of course, room temperature is going to vary. It's not one particular temperature. In summertime, room temperature is going to be higher than room temperature during wintertime. Maybe early in the morning, room temperature is lower than what room temperature will be in the middle of the day. But when we look at an average room temperature, we come up with about 22 degrees C. And we're just going to take that as an average. Now let's plot our points. We know that water has a boiling point of 100 degrees C. So we're going to go to our graph and we're going to, and I've got that a little bit too low, we're going to take our boiling point of water at <laughs> hundred degrees C. Our melting point of water is at naught degrees C and we're going to draw our line at naught degrees C. And we're going to label boiling point and we're just going to put a W for water and melting point of water. Let's now turn our attention to nitrogen. Nitrogen has a boiling point of minus 200 degrees. So that's boiling point of nitrogen and it has a melting point of 10 degrees lower. So there is our melting point of nitrogen. Ethanol has a boiling point of 78 degrees. So it's going to be more or less up here. And that is going to be the boiling point of ethanol. And our melting point of ethanol is going to be at just below 100 degrees, minus 100 degrees. That's going to give us our melting point of ethanol. And of course, room temperature would be somewhere up here at approximately 22 degrees C. And so we see very clearly that different substances have different melting points and different boiling points. So here's a very nice neat graph that is drawn very precisely and it shows you our different boiling points. And if we compare the boiling point of water, we see out of these three substances, it's got the highest boiling point. Whereas nitrogen has got the lowest boiling point. Let's answer some questions now as we analyze this graph. Now I want to teach you what it means to analyze data. Because this is something that you're going to be doing in science quite a lot, particularly if you one day choose to do science in grades 10, 11, and 12. And that is 
analyzing data. So data is information. Simple as that. And on this graph, we've got a lot of information. We've got information relating to the boiling points of different substances and their melting points. When we analyze data, it means that we take it apart. We break down what we have learned in order to truly understand that data. So I could show you a graph like this in an exam. And if I start to ask you questions relating to the data, and I ask you to break it down, then I'm asking you to analyze the data. Being able to draw the graph is actually quite simple. You're taking information that people have given you and you're drawing the graph. But it starts to become a little more tricky when you start to break down that information. But the wonderful thing about it is when you start breaking down or analyzing data, you start to see patterns. Let's interpret or we could say analyze the graph. Let's use the graph and get some important data and information out of it. What state, and remember when we talk about state, we refer to solids, liquids, and gases, would nitrogen be in at room temperature? Well, we know that room temperature, we said, was on average 22 degrees C. Now, where would nitrogen be at that point? Well, we know that the boiling point of nitrogen, which is the point at which liquid nitrogen is turned into gaseous nitrogen, and that happens at minus 200 degrees C. So at room temperature, it's going to be a gas. And we know that because here I am sitting in room temperature and I'm breathing in the gas and breathing out the gas of nitrogen. Here's our next question. You have a mixture of water and ethanol at room temperature. So we've put into a little beaker some ethanol and some water. We start to heat the mixture. So we're adding heat energy to the mixture. Which liquid would boil first and why? Well, if we start at 22 degrees and we start to increase our temperature, we're going to reach 78 degrees C, which is the boiling point of ethanol, before we reach 100 degrees C, which is the boiling point of water. So we know that ethanol or alcohol is going to boil first because it has a lower boiling point than water. So you can see what we're doing here. We're using the data or the information on the graph and we can start to break it down and analyze it. What we can do with that information then could help us. In higher grades, you might have to boil some alcohol and some water in a science experiment. And we know that that alcohol is going to boil at a lower temperature than the water. And what is going to happen is we're going to have the alcohol boiling. And if we continue to heat that mixture of alcohol and water, it, the alcohol is going to start spattering out of our beaker. It could even cause a fire. It could burn us. So very often the information that we get helps us understand the behavior of different materials and helps us to be safe when we're using those materials. So we've covered boiling points and melting points of different substances today. We've compared it to water and we've looked in particular at nitrogen and at ethanol and the boiling points and melting points for these two substances and compared it to water. That's it for our lesson today. I hope that you've enjoyed learning about boiling points and melting points. And remember, if you're going to experiment with boiling points in particular, you need to have an adult with you so that you don't 
burn yourself. But until next time, this is Helen saying goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.